and welcome back. About a year ago, I read a book called The Conspiracy Against the Human Race by Thomas Ligotti. It's a very dark book indeed, and it certainly stuck with me. And in that book, a certain man called Peter Zapfer, I think I'm pronouncing that name correctly, Peter Zapfer is mentioned an awful lot in that book. Zapfer was a Norwegian man, born in 1899, and he died in 1990, at the ripe old age of 91. And when he was 34, he wrote his famous essay, The Last Messiah. That was in 1933, when he was 34 years old. The Last Messiah could be seen as a kind of classical work of antinatalism. It's a very short essay, and it's actually possible to read it in just one sitting. It's quite short and precise. And the main gist of it is that this kind of heightened awareness that human beings have, this, this heightened state of consciousness that we've evolved, is actually a curse rather than a blessing. This heightened consciousness results in a kind of panic of existence, or an existential panic. It's explained in the book that Mother Nature may have overshot its target with us, and as a result we're kind of captives of the universe. I'm going to read chapter one for you here, because it's very short. Chapter one starts like this. One night in long bygone times, man awoke and saw himself. He saw that he was naked under cosmos, homeless in his own body, all things dissolved before his testing thought, wonder above wonder, horror above horror, unfolded in his mind. Then woman too awoke and said it was time to go and slay, and he fetched his bow and arrow, a fruit of the marriage of spirit and hand and went outside beneath the stars. But as the beasts arrived at their water holes where he expected them of habit, he felt no more the tigers bound in his blood, but a great psalm about the brotherhood of suffering between everything alive. That day he did not return with prey, and when they found him by the next moon, he was sitting dead by the water hole. It's, it's a very poignant essay indeed. Um, he, he uses a very powerful analogy in the essay as well. He uses the analogy of deers and antlers. In the past, it's, it's been speculated or even proven, I think, that certain deers evolved very oversized antlers or horns. Deers need antlers to survive. Antlers are very helpful to a deer, but at, through the process of evolution, certain deers evolved oversized antlers, and they became so big that it became too heavy for the deer to carry, and they became a hindrance to the deer. He likens that to uh, the, the consciousness that human beings have evolved with. In the past, consciousness was very helpful to us because it helped us to avoid being eaten by predators. But it went too far, and now we've got this kind of oversized, overinflated consciousness, and it's too heavy for us. We, we know too much, and so it's become a kind of hindrance to the human race. Another insight that's very powerful is, um, is to do with depression. We see depression as a kind of pathology, or like, a, like an illness. But it's hinted at that if you're depressed, it means you've kind of got a healthy mind, and you're intelligent enough to see things exactly as they are. That's another very powerful point in this essay. And it's also, it also stresses the fact that in order to stay happy, we have to distract ourselves. We have to kind of forget the reality of things. We need distraction to deal with this surplus amount of consciousness that we've acquired. And 
He also suggests that suicide is a kind of natural way to die. It's, we kind of see suicides as an unnatural death, but he argues that it's actually natural. Um, he, he finishes the essay with, a, with quite a powerful statement. Know yourselves, be infertile, and let the earth be silent after ye. Of course, that means don't procreate, don't reproduce, don't throw any more human beings into the kind of circus of life. That's how the essay ends. It's a very dark essay, of course. Um, personally, I've, I've found it, in terms of the prose and the writing style, um, it's fairly easy to read, although in, in certain parts it gets a little bit too academic. It becomes a little bit tough in parts to read, but on the whole it's very precise and f fairly fairly accessible to the, uh, to the average layman, let's say. So what do you think? Is life a horror show or is it a wonderful adventure? Let me know in the comments section. Thanks very much for watching. Become a member of jamesflynn.org for more of my content. I'll be back in a week or two with another video. And in the meantime, try to have a good day on this captivating, phenomenal, outrageous rock we call Earth. Goodbye.